Hello friends, welcome to the Engineering Funda family. In this video lecture series on IoT, we will explore a fascinating topic that is the end-to-end -end IoT architecture. By the end of this video, you will have a comprehensive understanding of the entire flow of IoT architecture covering data collection, data storage, data processing and data monitoring and control. Let's delve into each part of the IoT architecture in detail and gain valuable insights. So let's start with the things part of IoT. So a thing is an object equipped with sensors, actuators and smart devices. Sensors gather data which will be transferred over a network and on the other hand actuators that allow things to act, for example, to switch on or off the light, to open or close a door, to increase or decrease engine rotation speed and many more. Now let's understand the gateway part of an IoT. So data goes from things to the cloud and vice versa through the gateway. This gateway provides connectivity between things and the cloud part of the IoT solution which is the next stage right after this. This gateway enables data pre-processing and filtering before moving it to the cloud. So this will reduce the volume of the data for detailed processing and storing. So that ultimately leads to less memory and processing power. Now this gateway also transmit control commands going from the cloud to the things. Things then execute the commands forwarded by this cloud using their actuators to complete the process right from sensing to the actuation part. Now moving on to the next stage which is cloud gateway. So cloud gateway facilitates data compression and secure data transmission between field gateways and IoT servers. It also ensures compatibility with various protocols and communicates with field gateways using different protocols depending on what protocols is supported by gateways. Now next part is streaming data processor. So it ensures effective transition of input data forwarded by the cloud gateway to a data lake and control applications. It also ensures that no data can be occasionally lost or corrupted. Now let's focus on this data lake. So a data lake is used for storing the data generated by connected devices in its natural format or we can say raw data. Right. Now when the data is needed for meaningful insights, it is extracted from a data lake and loaded to a big data warehouse. Now let's discuss about this big data warehouse which is nothing but data storing facilities. So first filtered and pre-processed data needed for meaningful insights is extracted from a data lake to a big data warehouse. Now this big data warehouse contain only cleaned structured and matched data compared to a data lake which contains all sorts of data generated by sensors, right? Also data warehouse stores context information about the things and sensors. For example, where sensors are installed in the field, commands that control application send to the things and the time of that event, etc. So this is all about big data warehouse. Now the next part is data analytics. So these data analytics can use data from the big data warehouse to find trends and gain actionable insights. Now this data is analyzed and visualized in schemes, diagrams, infographics, etc. These will improve the performance of devices, help identify inefficiencies and work out the ways to improve an IoT system to make it more reliable and more customer oriented. Also the correlations and patterns found manually can further contribute to creating algorithms for control applications, right? Now let's focus on the next part which is machine learning and the models that the machine learning generates. Now machine learning provides the opportunity to develop highly accurate and efficient models for control applications based on the data patterns that it has received from the big data. Now these models can be continuously improved and updated using historical data stored in a big data warehouse. Now similar to our mobile OS update that we received at certain time period, 
updates to the model also occur on a regular basis such as weekly or monthly now data analyst play a crucial role in testing and evaluating the applicability and effectiveness of these new models generated by ml once the analyst have approved a new model it is then implemented and utilized by the control applications now this iterative process ensures that the models remain up to date and optimized for specific control task that they are designed to perform now let's move on to the next part which is control applications so these control applications send automatic commands and alerts to the actuators for example windows of a smart home can receive an automatic command to open or close depending on the forecast taken from the weather station take another example of sensors which monitor whether the soil is dry or not and based on that watering systems get an automatic commands to water the plants here the commands sent by control applications to actuators can be also additionally stored in a big data warehouse so these may help investigate problematic cases for example a control app sends commands but they are not performed by actuators due to some reason then connectivity gateway and actuators need to be checked for the inefficiency right on the other side storing commands from control apps may contribute to security for example some commands are too strange or come in too big amounts which may widen security breaches which need investigation and corrective measures now here the control applications can be either rule based or machine learning based so what do you mean by that so first rule based control applications work according to the rules stated by the specialist so it is fixed right on the other hand in ml based control applications control apps are using models which are regularly updated once in a week or once in a month depending on specifics of the iot system with the historical data stored in a big data warehouse now let's focus on the next part which is device administration now first let's discuss about user applications which are software component of an iot system which enables the connection of user to an iot system and gives the option to monitor and control smart things for example homes or cars controlled by a central system now with a mobile or web app user can monitor the state of their things send commands to control applications set options for automatic behavior for example automatic notification and actions when certain data comes from sensors right now to ensure sufficient functioning of iot devices it's not enough to install them and let the things go their way right so that's where the device management comes into picture now let's discuss device management parameter one by one now there are some procedures required to manage the performance of connected devices for example facilitate the interaction between devices ensure secure data transmission and many more now the next is device identification so these help to establish the identity of the devices to ensure that it's a genuine device with trusted software transmitting the reliable data right now the next device management parameter is configuration and control to tune the devices according to the purpose of an iot system now some parameters need to be written once a device is installed for example unique device id other setting might need updates for example the time between sending messages with data next is monitoring and diagnostic so this will ensure smooth and secure performance of every device in a network and reduce the risk of breakdowns right now the next parameter is software updates and maintenance so this will add functionality fix bugs address security vulnerabilities etc so hope you are clear about this device administration part of iot architecture now let's focus on the next part which is user administration in that let's first focus on the user management now alongside with the device management which we have just discussed it is very important to provide control over the user having access to the entire iot system so what's there in user management 
so this user management involves identifying users their roles access levels and ownership in a system it includes such options as adding or removing users managing user settings controlling access of various users to certain information as well as the permission to perform certain operations within a system controlling and recording user activity and many more right now let's delve into the last part of iot architecture which is security monitoring now as security is one of the top concerns in the internet of things now as connected things produces huge volumes of data right which need to be securely transmitted and protected from cyber criminals another side is that the things connected to the internet can be entry point for villains what is more cyber criminals can get the access to the brain of whole iot systems and take control of it now to prevent such problems it makes sense to log and analyze the commands sent by the control applications to the things monitor the actions of users and store all this data in the cloud with such an approach it is possible to address security breaches at the early stages and take measure to reduce their influence on the iot system for example block certain commands coming from control applications right also it is possible to identify the patterns of suspicious behavior store these samples and compare them with the logs generated by an iot system to prevent potential penetration and minimize their impact on the iot system i hope you found this video useful if you have any questions or need further clarification please don't hesitate to ask thank you so much for watching this video